Hello, I am Dan Cavallari and I am here at the Cycling Tips Field Test here in Boulder, Colorado. And I'm standing here with the Canyon Endurace CF SLX 9 Disc E-Tap. Quite a mouthful. <laughs> It runs 8,500 US dollars, and notably, it has a very high-end uh, build on it, which at this price range actually is pretty competitive with bikes that are far more expensive. So let's see what it's got. Drivetrain, SRAM Red ETAP axis throughout, so fully wireless. Uh, that eliminates anything that you have to route through the frame, very cool. Notably, this comes with the uh, SRAM power meter. At this price, that's actually a very good value. I would not call this bike a bargain, but it certainly has a lot of value packed into it. Uh, it also comes with DT Swiss, ERC 1100 die cut disc brake wheels. I've ridden these wheels pretty extensively on other bikes. I've uh, rather enjoyed them. I expect them to perform just as well on this bike as they have on other bikes I've tested. Those are wrapped in really big rubber. So right now I've got some Continental Grand Prix 30 millimeter tires. This actually comes stock with Schwalbe Pro One uh, tires, uh, same size though, 30 millimeter. And just looking, I don't, they don't note on the website how uh, large of a tire you can get in here, but I'm guessing 33. So you can get some pretty wide tires in here, uh, which is great for versatility. If you're gonna take this on some dirt roads, if the roads where you live are pretty chunky, uh, you have options. Comfort, uh, talking about these tires, I think Canyon is relying on these tires a lot for the compliance, particularly in the front end. You have an integrated cockpit here, which is you know your one piece bar stem, and it's really stiff, uh, which is great if you're riding on pavement and wanna do some heavy sprints or you're gonna be climbing a lot. Um, and so I think the compliance in that sense is gonna really rely on your tire pressure in these really big wide tires. In the back, Canyon does a little bit more for compliance. So you've got this uh, VCLS seat post, which is designed to pivot fore and aft to give you some of that comfort over you know rockier, gravel trails or even just your, your rough New England style uh, roads. They also incorporate a lower uh, seat clamp bolt and that helps the seat post pivot more than it otherwise would. And they have something called the comfort kink. And basically what that is is a taper here in the, uh, the seat tube and that allows a little bit more of that fore aft flex. So again, just sort of relying on that fore aft flex to provide the, the compliance in the rear here. That's a nod to the endurance roots of this bike. My question is when I'm riding it, how much compliance is too much compliance? or not enough. Uh, you know, this is meant to counter a lot of different terrains, a lot of different types of rides. Uh, if it gets too bouncy on the pavement, that can be kind of annoying. But then later in the ride, after you've been on the, in the saddle for four hours, are you getting enough compliance? So it's sort of a, a fine line to walk with a bike like this. That said, this is a fairly race geometry oriented bike. Short 990 millimeter wheelbase on the size medium, which I am testing, 73 degree head tube angle. I expect this to be a pretty uh, whippy ride that I can really dive into switchbacks on, uh, make quick line changes. Uh, I expect it to feel a lot like a, a performance oriented road racing bike. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how those big tires affect that geometry uh, and whether or not I feel like I'm actually on an endurance bike at all. Uh, so that's the quick rundown of what we've got here. It's a really interesting build on a, on a bike that's, I would, like I said, call a, a good value, not exactly a bargain at $8,500, but certainly they pack a lot of technology and great components into this bike. So I'm gonna ride this both on the pavement and on some dirt, get a sense of the compliance features here. So I'm all kitted up in my tight, fancy clothes. I'm gonna go ride this, see how it goes. All right, we are back. I am Dan Cavallari. This is Kaylee Fretz. And we have both ridden this Canyon Endurance and we both have opinions. Let's start with the wrong opinion. <laughs> Kaylee Fretz, what do you think of this bike? Uh, it's very bikey bike. It's, it's like you get on it, there's not a whole lot to set it apart from other bicycles. And I think that is very much the point of this bike. The steering geometry is extremely standard. The sort of tube shapes, you don't have any sort of 
significant arrow shaping. It's very much designed to be light and fast and climbing and things like that. The one thing I would say that is kind of different from other bikes like this, well, one, you have pretty exceptional tire clearance, although that's becoming more and more common. And two is this seat post right here, which is basically two like different pieces of the seat post that allow it for, to flex backward and forward quite a bit. You can feel that seat post when you are riding and it makes the whole bike a lot more comfortable. As a recent con convert to the suspension seat post on gravel bikes, thanks to my $175 Cannondale CAD 2, I like this on road bikes now. It makes my bum happy when the road is rough. And when Kaylee's bum is happy, we're all happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would agree to a large extent with what you said. I think uh, there's a lot of compliance, I think, in the, in the rear of this bike. And, you know, I talked about it before with, you know, with the seat post and also the, the comfort kink, which I just love that name. They call this the comfort kink. Uh, and that, that again, gives me that, that fore aft flexion. And that, that felt great. It actually, and it's not too much, which I think is, is really, uh, what makes this this ride quality so nice is that it does feel pretty balanced. It still still feels fairly stiff, like a like a like a race bike should. But when you hit bigger square edge hits or you know you're hitting constant chatter, this does a lot to quiet that. That said, the front end is still pretty is very stiff as I thought it would be with an integrated cockpit like this. You're reliant upon the tire pressure for compliance up front. Again, I really think this is a nod to sort of the racing roots of this bike. And to me, it does feel like a race bike. I mean, climbing on it and descending on it, all of that adds up to me to one of those twitchy, I, I, I gotta stop using that word because it's not the right word, but just ultra responsive front end that you could really throw into corners, which is dogged a little bit with the big tires, but honestly, for the versatility um, that you're able to, to get big tires in this at, at all, I think it's great. You know, you can, if you want that really sharp dive into the corners feel, you can just do a slightly narrower tire and you'd be fine. It is kind of a bike of two personalities, I would say, in a lot of ways, because you're right, it, like, it feels like a, not, not quite a race bike, right? Not, not like a full sort of hard nosed, this is all I wanna do is go fast race bike, but it's on that end of the spectrum. And there's a lot of things about this bike that are designed to make it feel like that, right? Like you said, the, the sort of sharp handling, the stiff front end, I will say the sort of front end to rear end compliance feels a little bit out of whack to me, right? You've got a whole lot of compliance coming out of the back end of the frame and you've got that compliance coming out of the seat post. You got basically nothing <laughs> coming out of the front here. And then you, so you, you, you combine that sort of like racy kind of feel of the frame with big tires. What are these, 32s? 30s. 30s? Mm -hmm. They're 30s on a big wide rim, so they probably measure more than 30. I haven't actually pulled the calipers out yet, but they're big. Yeah. And that, is, it, like I said, makes kind of a bike of two personalities, which frankly, I think is what a lot of people are actually looking for these days. You want a bike that when you stand up out of the saddle and you're going around a corner, it responds to you, but really, we're not racing the Tour de France. I don't need the extra 6.2 watts that would come from a slightly smaller tire or whatever. I like the comfort. You can run these things at, I was running these tires at like 50 PSI, 51 PSI. Super comfortable, still really fast. You get that fun, fast, racy-ish mm -hmm. frame combined with those tires with that suspen not suspension seat post, with that seat post that provides a whole lot of comfort. Yeah. It's, a good, it's a good mix. Yeah, I didn't find the, the front to back comfort difference that bothersome, to be honest. Uh, and I think we've talked about this a little bit. Kaylee and I have pretty different body types, and I think that that largely goes back to you know, say, little short arms, little <laughs> dinosaur arms, he's got little lankies. So I think it, it, has, it, it really comes down to where we both sit in relation to the geometry of this bike. I think I'm a little further back uh, and I'm less less reliant on the front of the bike for compliance anyway. Yeah, when I rode it, I also like slam the stem all the way down and things like that, which yeah. is gonna make it feel a little more aggressive yeah. and I have more weight on my hands for yeah. sure than you do. Yeah, I, I definitely don't feel it as much. So I don't think I need as much compliance in the front anyway and I will take that trade off for the nice stiff cockpit where I can really wrench on it, especially because I like to do little sprints for the town line by myself. I'm never gonna win anything. I can't even win against myself. But no, I think it's a, I think it's a really well-balanced bike. I think it's fun, uh, it's capable, it's versatile, and it's a good price uh, when compared to bikes of this same ilk. I mean, this is really, this is f f two to $4,000 cheaper than some bikes that ride just as well, that have a lot of the same components. I wouldn't say it's my, been my favorite bike of the test, but it's definitely up there. Um, I think it's a great bike for, for the money. 
Uh, I wouldn't call it a bargain, but like I said, it is a value. Anything you don't like? The saddle. Saddle. Saddles, saddle's a little rough. Um, I would definitely change that out. Physique makes great saddles. This just isn't one of this them. This isn't one of them, yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, one of my favorite saddles right now is a Physique, but this is just not the one. <laughs> yeah. You know, Canyon, they, 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 they often use, uh, I feel like, kind of undersized, soft, kind of nuts and bolts and things. Mm, yeah. and, and so, you know, we, as part of these reviews, we... You know, we're we're, mo we're moving the the handlebars around and stuff for different testers and things like that, and just little like, silly little things, right? Like, like the tiny little bolt that that tightens down the headset up here is just, it's itty bitty. It's a little it's a little T25, I think, maybe even a T20. Like, yeah. uh, so you need a Torx head, like little stuff like that. I, mm. I find kind of annoying. Uh, I like why not why not just use a four mil Allen key sure. like the rest of the planet yeah. right here. And, like it's really small nitpicky stuff, but it, it is just they, they do it kind of all over the place, and it's a little bit irritating yeah. to me. While we're nitpicking, so this has wireless drivetrain on it, so you don't run cables anyway. So you're left with these two hydraulic hoses, which are you know run externally. Uh, you have this big integrated cockpit. Would you prefer these be integrated so you get that clean aesthetic, or do you like the fact that they're external? Or do you uh, care? I have a philosophical opposition to integrated cables, so <laughs> no, I like seeing them. Yeah, and I agree with you on that, but I'll take it a step further, and I wish they had done a two-piece bar and stem, because the whole point of this integration, besides stiffness, is to be aerodynamic up front. So you got these two cylinders hanging out the front, why not, if, that's, if, this, if the speed is not the priority here, why not give me a more adjustable cockpit, especially in an endurance bike like this, where I'm, I may end up changing my position or I may you know, want that adjustability for other reasons. So to me, the, the fact that there's this big aero integrated cockpit and then these two cylinders hanging right off the front just seems contradictory to me. What does it ride like? What other bikes does it ride like? It does ride a little bit like the BMC road machine that we tested, the road machine 012. Um, I feel like this one, if the geometry was a little bit better for me on this one, uh, but the two ride qualities are, are fairly similar. I'd say the BMC has a little bit more compliance built in up front, uh, but in the rear, they do feel pretty similar. Mm. I was gonna say like the old Amanda, the old Trek Amanda, not the newest one, but the, like the sort of arrow tweaked one, but the old one that was just sort of more pure climby. Sure. Uh, feels a lot like that to me. It's a little bit more slacked out and a little bit more comfortable. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it's 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 one of those bikes that's it, it doesn't have a lot of like exceptional characteristics. Right. It just also doesn't have anything that annoys you, right? right? It's just solid. It does what you want it to do. It's stable when you need it to be, but it'll go around a corner as fast as you need it to. Yeah. It, it's just a very middle of the road, standard geometry, standard layup, light enough, not super aero, bike. If that's, if that's what you want, <laughs> we got, yeah. how much was it again? 8,500. We got $8,500 of bike here. <laughs> that's, that's what you get. Yeah. I liked it a little bit more than that. I, I'll give it a little bit more praise for, for its That's high quality. That's praise. That's praise. Yeah. Like, there's just nothing wrong with it. Almost yeah. every single bike that we're testing here, something, something. is like, that's ah, kind of annoying. Yeah. And this, the literally the most annoying thing that I can think of was the bolt at the top yeah. of the headset. Like, this, it's, <laughs> it's a good. fantastic bike. It it's just doesn't yeah. we could do nitpick, much. We could nitpick any bike. Yeah. But this, is, this really does everything you need it to do for a good price. Yeah. So. Cool. I think that's uh, that's a, that's a good way to wrap it up. I think this is uh, for eighty five hundred dollars a good value compared to its competition. Uh, great ride quality. A uh, few little nitpicks here and there, but otherwise a really safe bet if you're just looking for that bike. If you would like a bicycle, this is a bicycle for you. Yeah. Now, of course, we're testing a whole pile of bikes here at this year's field test. We've got road bikes, we've got gravel bikes, we've got all kinds of stuff. Make sure you never miss a single review. Make sure you subscribe below, hit like, leave a comment. What do you think of this bike?